is uh, Mel Fowler-Green, the Executive Director at the Metro Human Relations Commission. And uh, we are all really excited um, uh, at the Commission and at the Metro National uh, Community Oversight Board um, to hear from you uh, this evening um, on what you would like to see in the next police chief, and the concerns, general concerns you have about public safety in your community. Um, I'll go through a little bit of uh, housekeeping matters. Um, to participate in our town hall this evening, you can call 629-255-1907. Um, there's uh, going to be a two minute uh, limit on statements. Um, if you um, cannot be with us or if you are hearing this at a later date and you still want to give a statement, you can uh, leave a pre-recorded statement <clears throat> at 629-255-1906. You can also uh, provide a written statement. Um, when you call in, uh, know that we are gonna do a quick intake. We're gonna put you into the queue and if you are listening online to the meeting, please be sure to silence that feed before you go on air to avoid um, audible feedback. Um, our host today uh, may ask for clarification or ask clarifying questions, um, but will not otherwise uh, be engaged in lengthy dialogue. Finally, if um, you're not able to get through tonight, we encourage you to use the alternative forms of participation um, or try again on one of our other nights. Um, we will have um, at least one, um, possibly two um, more of these events and more information about those will be announced soon. And with that, um, I am happy to introduce um, one of our co-hosts, uh, uh, Dr. Marissa Richmond, the chair of the Relations Commission. Thank you. Uh well, um, again, I'm Marissa Richmond. I'm the chair of the Metro Human Relations Commission. Uh, just a brief history of our commission. Uh, the current version was chartered in 1995. There was an earlier version originally chartered in the 1960s, but then shut down in the 80s. Uh, but both versions um, were created to address um, discrimination and harassment by, by the police. Uh, and we are chartered uh, to, uh, to help uh, uh, investigate and make recommendations regarding uh, discrimination in all of Metro government. Um, the, the commission consists of 17 members of the community um, from all walks of life. Uh, we serve three-year terms, um, and, um, and then uh, we oversee a four-person staff, staff uh, headed up by our executive director, Mel Fowler Green, who you just heard from a second ago. Tonight is the second of two community meetings. Uh, we held the first one a week ago. Uh, we heard from 18 members of the community from all parts of Davidson County uh, sharing their, their thoughts and concerns regarding the hiring of a new police chief and of public safety. And we look forward uh, to engaging with you tonight um, uh, and hearing from uh, your, uh, from you and your thoughts. Uh, and again, uh, for those of you um, who may be watching a recorded version, um, you can still um, again call in your comments or submit them in writing online. Um, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to my uh, my co-host tonight uh, from the Community Oversight Board. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Andres Martinez. Uh, so um, thank you for being here and uh, take it away. This is Andres Martinez, current chair of the Community Oversight Board. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Richmond, and the Metro Human Rights Commission um, for organizing this space to hear from community, community members about their vision for a better Nashville. Um, just a little bit about the Metro Nashville Community Oversight Office and the Community Oversight Board. Um, Metro 
MNCO Metro Nashville Community Oversight was is dedicated to provide an, uh, providing an accessible, respectful, independent, and effective forum for community participation like this in the investigation and the resolution of complaints of the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department. Um, they examine policy issues regarding local law enforcement policies and practices. They encourage open and constructive communication and cooperation between local law enforcement and Metro's residents. And they protect civilians' rights and promote professionalism and best practices in the police department to enhance community police relations and create a safer Nashville. Um, the COB is an 11 member board and the MCO is an eight person staff, um, some of who are joining us today. Um, so with that, I'd like to begin to see or check to see if there are any callers waiting in line. If not, we have some recorded messages that we can hear. All right, we have one more call on and uh, Yes, I would like to see in a police chief, someone who works with the community, and when there is an issue with the community, that he is um, working with the community to solve any issues within that community, because the only way a police chief can work for a community that it, it is if he worked within the community. So I think all police chiefs or this police chief or all, anybody who is hired needs to get in the community and find out the needs, the wants, and the desires of the people and not create a need, want, and desire that he may think that they need. He needs to speak to the people and the community to see what they need and then follow through. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Valier. Is there another uh, call? Um, it'll be another minute. Somebody just called in. Uh, do you want to play a recorded message? Yes, I'm uh, this is Smell, and I am happy uh, to do that. Just give me a moment here. <laughs> Um, I'm having a technical difficulty. Um, I am happy to read one of our written comments from um, Joel um, in Jolton. Let it go. Let it go. That's fine. Um, and someone with uh, what Joel says is that he is looking for someone with a focus on mental health and housing. We need to implement a housing first approach in which we address mental health, homelessness and substance use with an approach that utilizes safe housing as a way for people to have sustainable life habits. Why the chief needs to be on board? The chief needs to advocate for housing first in their budget, in their officer training, and to hire social workers. Representation is essential in law enforcement, so the department and the chief need to work to make sure their force represents the community. Thank you, Joel, for that comment. All right, we have another caller. Okay, here we go. All right, you're on the line. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Venick. I live uh, in the West Nashville area, sort of close to Sylvan Park. Um, I'm calling, I agree with everything the previous caller said, um, but for me, it's just really, really important that the next chief of police um, commit very strongly to working with the community oversight board um, because we voted in Nashville um, for the Community Oversight Board, and it represents what the people of Nashville want. And um, historically, um, at least under Chief Anderson, there's been a lot of difficulty with the um, collaboration with the Community Oversight Board getting the documents they need, having access um, to get the information they need to, to perform their, their you know, responsibilities and mandate under the Metro Charter. So uh, it's just absolutely critical that the next uh, police chief um, uh, commit um, very strongly that he will work collaboratively 
and will give uh, the Community Oversight Board everything that they need to do uh, their job to represent the community of Nashville and make sure that um, our police have proper community oversight. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, caller. Um, we can uh, go either to the next caller or should we have a, another uh, recorded comment? Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a recorded comment. All right, thank you. My name is Alicia Bunch Vargas, and I am a licensed clinical social worker. I am one of the clinical directors at the Sexual Assault Center in Nashville, Tennessee. The mission of the Sexual Assault Center is to provide healing for children, adults, and families affected by sexual assault to end sexual violence through counseling, education, and advocacy. On behalf of the Sexual Assault Center, I would like to recommend the next Chief of Police prioritize training on responding to victim survivors in the community. This training should emphasize the importance of trauma-informed care. It is important for first responders to be aware of how neurobiology affects victim survivors. The next Chief of Police should ensure that all police officers are aware of how past trauma can impact the way that we respond under stress. The Chief of Police should collaborate with organizations like Sexual Assault Center to provide specific training on how trauma-informed response to sexual assault. The next Chief of Police should also prioritize identifying ways to end sexual harassment and assault within the police force. The police force should be a safe place for victim survivors to report sexual assault and receive support by supervisors. Police officers should not have to live in silence when they have experienced sexual assault by a supervisor or a peer. There should also be a third-party investigation if there are allegations of a police officer assaulting someone. The next chief of police should also prioritize appropriately responding to limited English proficiency from the individual. It is imperative that the police force understand and know how to provide trauma-informed care when responding to a call with a limited English proficiency from the individual. Thank you for your time. Okay, great. I'm going to put you on hold for just a second. And I'll... My name is Alicia Bunch Vargas. All right. All right. We have a call. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. Caller, uh, please identify yourself and where you are and uh, keep the man with us. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. I am I am the government's office of family safety. Our department oversees those family justice centers in the community. And I just wanted to um, give a statement about the importance of how our police chief organizes his divisions and units around victim services. Um, a large part of the police department um, are specialized divisions, and those specialized divisions really are important to making sure that victims receive the compassionate and understanding response to what has happened to them um, that they deserve, such as sex crimes, domestic violence, human trafficking, and other crimes like that, and also um, survivors of homicide victims. And those, those specialized divisions take a lot of extra training um, and focus and specialized skills. We have had a police chief in the past to really just, um, work to dismantle the specialized divisions and it really impacted victims tremendously in the community. Also, another thing a lot of people don't realize in our police department, there are a lot of counselors and they're some of the most skilled counselors to deal with victims of trauma and help and support them um, through what they're going through. And, I certainly would hope that our next police chief would be very supportive if not want to grow that department because that part of their police department because it is so important. Our headquarters is attached to a family justice center, which is a place where victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, trafficking, and other interpersonal violence crimes can come to get the help they need. Sometimes they engage the help of the detectives, but a lot of times they really just want to talk to um, an advocate that's not associated with the police department. And I really hope that our next police chief is um, works very closely with the Family Justice Centers and Metro Government's Office of Family Safety 
to really meet victims where they are and provide the services that they need. Nearly half of all violent crime against a person in our community is domestic violence. Um, when you add in sexual assault, homicides, and other violent crimes that often involve interpersonal violent victims, you're getting well above half the crime. So that's a big part of what our, our new police chief will be overseeing, and I really hope we find someone that has a heart for that type of work and understands it's important. Thank you very much for that. Um, do we have another caller waiting? Yes, we have another caller who will be on in just one second. Okay, sure. Thank you. All right, caller, you're on the line. Go ahead. Please identify yourself. Are you there, caller? I am. Yes, yes, here you go ahead. Please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Karen. I'm from East Nashville. And I just wanted to say, as a survivor of domestic violence, we need a chief that's going to put that topic back on the table. Nashville was once the city that other cities looked to when it came to tackling this issue. And as a city, we're listed fifth, or I'm sorry, as a state, we're listed fifth in the country for men who kill women in domestic violence situations. And with the growth of Nashville, this will only get worse if we don't focus on how to work on this right now. So we need someone who will enforce the laws for domestic violence victims, and we need someone that is going to ensure that proper and effective training to law enforcement, advocates, and volunteers in domestic violence are there and available. So let's get back and get ahead on this issue. Let's take our stand and let's see if we can curb the domestic violence here in not only Nashville, but the state of Tennessee as well. All right, thank you very much. I will turn it back over to uh, uh, Chairman Martinez. Yes, I believe we don't have any calls uh, right now, so we can uh, hear another recorded call or uh, a submitted statement. All right, I can play another recorded message. Yes, what I would like to see in a chief of police is for the process to be transparent and fair in selecting the next chief. Uh, in his July 28th statement, Mayor Cooper uh, laid out in the selection chief selection roadmap saying that a uh, review committee uh, will be made up uh, of people from the community and from law enforcement and that they will review the top tier qualified candidates and recommend candidates for advancement to the interview process. But later in the statement, he says that human relations uh, will be scoring the candidates. My concern is which is true. Uh, has Cobb heard anything that would clarify which statement is true? Uh, this is the end of August and we haven't heard anything from the mayor about a diverse review committee. Um, so, you know, I'm just concerned about what is happening. And I was wondering if you believe that uh, the community oversight board should be on the committee. And if the mayor is actually committed to a transparent and impartial process. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Um, this is Mel, um, the director at the Metro Human Relations Commission. Um, and um, my understanding at the moment is that uh, I, I haven't uh, seen the list um, of the committee, the selection committee. Um, and if uh, Andres or um, Marissa, if you have any further information we can share with the community, um, you can chime in, but as my understanding is there has not yet been a public announcement of who will be on that committee. I have not seen or heard anything about the, the actual selection and who's going to serve. Um, 
whether any representatives of the Human Relations Commission will be included. Although uh, I think I speak for all 17 of us is that we would um, we would certainly uh, uh, embrace such a, an opportunity uh, to help uh, uh, represent members of the community. Right, I have not seen anything either about who will be on the committee. I just know that the finalists are going to be uh, interviewed by a panel that includes a variety of community voices and partners, is what, uh, according to the mayor's office. Do we have a, another written message that we can share while we wait for more phone calls? Uh, we don't have any other recorded messages or anyone queued right now, so we can um, have a written statement. Uh, I'm happy to share a, another written statement. <clears throat> Um, this is from Dr. Elizabeth Barna in East Nashville in the Greenwood community specifically. Uh, my name is Dr. Elizabeth uh, Catherine Barna and I completed my PhD in sociology at Vanderbilt University earlier this summer. Crime law and deviance was one of my areas of specialization during graduate school and I was a co-author on Gideon's Army's uh, Driving While Black report published in 2016. I am currently working as a postdoctoral fellow at Vanderbilt, where I seek to bring academic and community need and expertise together. I'm also a survivor of violent crime, an aggravated robbery and carjacking in 2016. I've lived in Nashville for six years, including Hillsborough Village, North Nashville, near Fisk University in East Nashville, near Shelby Park, and now um, in the Greenwood neighborhood. There have been several times during my time in Nashville that I have needed to call the police, but hesitated at first because I was afraid that my request for help might be the catalyst for another case of pr police brutality in our city. In July of 2016, I had my purse and car stolen at gunpoint by two teenagers who pushed me to the ground before leaving with my possessions. This was a violent crime. I was left with no purse, no vehicle, and I had injuries. Fortunately, they were minor. My attackers decided to push me rather than shoot me. Uh, a reasonable person would call 911 after being physically attacked. And I know I needed help, but I was hesitant as my attackers happened to be black. Because of MNPD's history of excessive force when engaging with people of color, I was afraid that calling the police would lead to someone being injured or killed, whether it be law enforcement, the teenagers who attacked me, or an innocent black community member who, quote, fit the description of the suspects. I ultimately called 911, and I found myself begging the dispatcher, please don't hurt them, they're only babies. One, no victim of violent crime should have to worry that their call for help will lead to the escalation of violence or to an innocent bystander being caught in the crossfire. However, given MMPD's history of shooting black Nashvillians in the back with no meaningful consequences for the offending officers, this was a consideration I, a victim, needed to make. This next incident is less extreme in terms of victimization, but illustrates the anxieties community members face when deciding whether to call the police. In September of 2018, I was involved in a car accident in which the offender ran a stop sign and T-boned me. When the woman exited her car and began screaming and slamming her hands on the hood of her car, I realized that she didn't have car insurance. I tried speaking with her calmly, suggesting we resolve the issue among ourselves. And when she realized the extent of the damage to my vehicle and the likely cost, she began yelling at me and blaming me for the accident. I felt intimidated and knew that I needed to file a police report for my own insurance purposes. But again, I was presented with a dilemma as the person who hit my car happened to be black. What would police officers do if I presented with a black woman yelling at me, a white woman? What would they see her as I did, as someone who was having a very bad day or as a threat warranting force? 
would this physically harm would they physically harm or even kill her if I she raised her voice and stepped in their direction? This may seem like an extreme line of questioning, but I find it fair considering MMPD's longstanding failure to appropriately address community members' concerns um, of excessive force along racial lines. I've uh, ultimately called the police, but I only remotely felt comfortable in doing so after the woman had left the scene. She sped off after realizing that my car was not drivable. This was less so because I was afraid of her and more so because I was afraid of what might happen to her if officers showed up while she was raising her voice. Driving without insurance and yelling at somebody should not be a death sentence, and I worried that it could be given MMPD's track record. Again, as a computer, co community member who needed help, I questioned MMPD's ability to de-escalate the situation and refrain from excessive force, which generated additional stress for me. As a survivor of aggravated robbery who lives with PTSD, I empathize with concerns about community safety and with the challenges officers face in considering use of force. I understand all too well that we do not live in a perfect world, that violent crime exists, and that force is sometimes necessary to contain a person who presents a clear and imminent danger. But that being said, it's critical to acknowledge the legacy of implicit racial bias and racialized violence within American police departments. MNPD is no exception. When choosing a new police chief, Nashville should honor victims of violent crime by ensuring that their calls for help bring justice, not further violence against vulnerable community members. The incoming police chief's main priorities should be de-escalation, racial equity and holding offending officers accountable for firing and by firing and prosecuting them. As a survivor of violent crime, I want to make it clear to decision makers. If you choose a tough on crime police chief who tolerates white supremacy and excessive force in law enforcement, you cannot claim to do so in my name. Um, Dr. Barna, I wanna say thank you for um, sharing your story. Um, we, we appreciate it. Thank you, Mel. I think we have a caller on the line. All right, caller, you're on the line. Hi, my name is Becky Bullard, and I'm also with the Metro Nashville Office of Family Safety. And we are a Metro government office or department that works with our team. We oversee both of our family justice centers in the courthouse and the family justice center that's located next to police headquarters. And as our department head emphasized, we work regularly with our nonprofit partners and of course with our police partners. And we would really love to see the next police chief continue the strong relationship that we have with our nonprofit partners and with our office to provide them best wraparound services to victims of interpersonal violence. And truly, victims of interpersonal violence, such as domestic violence, human trafficking, sexual assault, child abuse. I think we Did we lose the caller? <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think we lost the caller. Um, but I think there's another one lined up, ready to go. And Ms. Okay. Bullard, if you would like to call back to finish um, your statement, you'd be certainly be most welcome to. Thanks. Okay, next caller, go ahead. I think we accidentally lost several, a few people who were queued. So if you were on the line, please do call back. And uh, Rishi's back on the line. Okay, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Becky Bullock. I'm going to start repeat myself a little bit. But I just wanted to reemphasize multiple callers' points, but in particular, our department head at the Metro Office of Family Safety that we really hope that we see with the next police chief a continued strong commitment to working on interpersonal violence, um, both with our two family justice centers. We have a family justice center in the courthouse as well as one in the community next to police headquarters. Within those two centers, we work consistently with 
nonprofit partners that are working on domestic violence, human trafficking, child abuse, sexual assault, and elder abuse. And the partnership that we have with police, with our multidisciplinary teamwork, and our response to crime victims is incredibly important. Victims of these crimes really can't get what they need without wraparound services and a trauma-informed response from their detectives. So that trauma-informed response was referenced by another caller, and it really truly means that those detectives are trained to consider the impact of trauma when responding to something so difficult and so personal as someone that's supposed to care about you harming you or someone who is violating you in a really personal way. So those things are incredibly important for, for our survivors and victims of crime to know that they have the services and know that they can count on not only nonprofits and our Family Justice Center advocates, but also on our police partners to have that compassionate care in their response. Um, so we are hopeful that with the next police chief we can see continued partnership and continued dedication to all of the multidisciplinary teams that operate within the Family Safety Center and to all of our work to really wrap around our services and support of our clients. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you were able to get back. Uh, do we have another caller? Okay. Hey, there's another caller on the line. You just had. Hi. Um, I'm a um, housing navigator. Is so I am calling because I would like to see the next piece of police. Um, I, again, I want to echo a previous caller of having trauma informed care when it comes to responding to um, events and um, calls and all that. I, I personally have worked with somebody who is experienced, was experiencing suicidal ideation, and um, I'm, you know, police had to was called per um, protocol, protocol via um, safety lined up between MHC and um, police. However, you know, that led to a trigger and the lady, you know, I had to de-escalate the situation through my training and just to, to help and to help her calm down and accept the help that we were attempting to provide. It would be would have been far better if a social worker would have joined up with us, and it would lead to better safety. They have we had more um, social work ability in the community. You know, less it, it would lead to less crime because people are not you know starving. They know where to go. They know that there is help out there. So I would like to see the next chief of police embrace the community and in and help with public safety by building public community services, things to actually help the unfortunate, help the homeless, help the mentally ill, help the community as an entire whole, and having better, you know, responses to tragedies instead of responses and to where people are not trapped with that question of why call for help or you know, killed mistakenly because we have yeah, the help that we be And, you know, to where are there for a community and police are there, you know, and are not a trigger or are not because because they are better trauma informed care. Okay, and could you give us your name again? Are you still with us? Yes, I'm Rachel Vandalo. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Um, do we have another caller waiting? Uh, we don't. We could have another written statement. Okay. Uh, Mel? Yes, um, I'm here and we have a written statement um, from Nikki Wood uh, in Green Hills. 
And uh, Nikki says, it's time for a progressive chief of police who sees value in adding a mental health professional to 911 response teams. We know that up to 40% of 911 calls involve mental health issues. A city of this size needs a police response team that includes a staffer credentialed in mental health who is not a police officer. We also need a chief of police who will lead a force that does not have an arsenal of anti-personnel uh, weapons. It's appalling the stash of arms and gear we've allowed our force to amass. We've dramatically overfunded and overtrained our officers to over respond. So thank you, Nikki, um, for your comments. If we have a call, I would, can read another one. Do we have any other callers or do, should we go to another written, written one? Uh, we, we don't have anybody in the queue right now. Okay. Well then, let's go to the written one. Um, we have a comment um, from Greta McLean um, from Nashville. She says, I want to see a new chief that is selected by an impartial panel of community advocates and law enforcement from outside of Tennessee. I want a chief uh, committed to removing anyone who ignored racism, sexism, and sexual violence, who will commit to adapting either the End Violence Against Women International Sexual Misconduct in law enforcement prevention and accountability policy or the IACP sexual misconduct in law enforcement policy. And who's willing to allow MNPD employees who are not comfortable reporting abuse internally to have the option to report to the community oversight board and have COB investigate the allegations. Lastly, I want a chief who respects the voices of the voters and works in partnership with the COB instead of being an adversary. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Greta, for um, for your comments and for uh, your reference um, to uh, precise policies. Okay, uh, we'll turn it back over to Chair Martinez uh, for the next one. I don't believe we have any calls uh, in the queue, so if there is another written uh, statement, we could hear that. Yes, um, we do have more written comments um, from Robert Glenn um, near Centennial Park. Uh, Robert would like to see someone who's willing to fire police officers to do bad things that are as bad apples, um, are quick to resort to violence. Someone who is willing to look into alternative forms of policing, reform, and community outreach. Someone who's willing to look into how and why crimes are committed to see what best would be able to fix the issue without always resorting to just spending more money on police officers. Someone who's willing to uphold the laws of the city and will execute on them faithfully and with good intention. Um, we also have a, uh, unless we have another call in the queue, I can read um, another. Yeah, I don't believe we have a call yet, so go ahead. Okay. Um, from uh, uh, Katie Getz, um, West End, uh, Elmington community. I would like to see a police chief who acknowledges the racist white supremacist history um, and present of, of policing. I want a police chief who recognizes that police officers are overextended in their responsibilities and that they should not be responsible for curing all of the city's ails. 
I want a police chief who advocates for a city budget that allocates more money to housing, education, transportation, healthy food options, and more so that police do not have to try to solve all the problems that lack of communica community investment can lead to with uh, the one tool they have, violence. I want a police budget that allocates zero dollars for riot gear, tear gas, tanks, and other weapons that are used to hurt our residents. I want a police chief that's willing to purge white supremacists from our police force. I want a police chief that works with community violence interrupters who are already doing the work and who um, respects their insights. I want police officers in Nashville to have their own liability insurance, just like I, as school counselor, have to pay for my own liability insurance because the city and the taxpayers should not pay out for lawsuits against the police. Thank you, uh, Katie, for your comments. Do you have another call ready to go? Yes, uh, we, have another, we have a caller on the line. Go ahead. Hi, this is Kathy Gurley with You Have the Power. And uh, we need a uh, police chief who um, the needs of, of both the victim and the community, not only during the process, but the process. But Decisive, thorough decisions. We seem to have lost the audio there. Is, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay, sorry. Can we? I am. Um, it seems like we were cutting out. Can you repeat? Uh, repeat the whole thing. Hello? Yes, please, if you could, uh, you were cutting in and out, and we definitely want to hear your um, full statement. Okay, uh, you know what, let me call on my landline, that, if that's okay, and then it will, the reception will be better, because this is, I, I went outside, but it's not working. So, hey, let me call on my phone. Sure. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have any other callers while we wait. Is there another written message that we can uh, read while we wait for Ms. Curley to call back? Um, yes, there um, are more written comments while we are waiting. Um, this is from uh, James Stanton in Hermitage. Uh, I'd like to see a police chief that embraces transparency, community oversight, common sense reform, de-escalation, use of force standards, body cameras, and public a public database of misconduct. There are ways to work with the community and protect trust. We must work together and we can achieve a common goal to protect and serve all the while and preventing unnecessary deaths and shooting that other parts of the country have seen. Being proactive is the best approach. Um, thank you, James, for your uh, comments. Um, we have another very short comment um, from uh, Brenda Francis in uh, District 29. And uh, in answer to what we, what she would like to see in a chief of police and for public safety, um, she would like to see equal justice. Thank you, Mel. I think we have uh, Ms. Gurley back on the line and we're also waiting in queue. <laughs> All right, so you're on the line, you can go ahead. Thank you, uh, this is uh, Kathy Gurley, CEO of You Have the Power. We're a victim rights advocacy group, and uh, we are looking for a police chief who understands the needs of the victim, not only at the time of the incident, but ongoing, and how this impacts our community on an ongoing way. Uh, with full of empathy and understanding, and who will make 
uh, decisions based on what will be great for the community and the law. And make those decisions quickly. I think we lost a girly face over there. I'm sorry, now you're going in and out. <laughs> uh, did you did you finish your comment? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for calling back. Thank you. I think we have a another caller on the line. Thank you. All right. Colors on the line, go ahead. Hi, my name is Pat Halper. I live in the Green Hills area. And I would like to add my voice to the call for a better way to um, work with people who are experiencing mental health issues in our city. I, we, our city has um, headed in a, in a better direction with that through the crisis treatment center at the mental health co-op where police are able to um, drop people off there for treatment and and not take them to jail. Um, we have a behavioral care center that will be opening up at our new jail. Um, but in the past, our police department has been unwilling to do things um, that are being done in other places, like using crisis intervention teams that, um, that are sent out with a mental health professional and with police that are specifically trained and who want to work in this area, much like we have SWAT teams and canine teams and other kind of teams on our police force that have been trained for specific tasks. Other cities um, train teams of officers that, that go out on mental health calls along with a mental health professional. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel and we can do this better. And I hope that we, our next police chief is somebody that is open to those kinds of ideas, even if it does mean reallocating resources so that we can better serve people in our city who are experiencing all kinds of mental health issues. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think we have another question in the Mel, is there another written statement that we can read? Sorry, I can't. Um, yes, there is a, another uh, written statement I can read. Um, and, and this was from a constituent who um, wishes to remain anonymous. Um, do we have an open, do we have somebody with an open line right now? Yeah, are you talking to me? <laughs> oh, you still there? Are you done with your statement? Oh, yes, I'm done. Sorry. Oh, okay, well, great. Thank you so much for calling um, and sharing your perspective. Okay, and moving to um, the written statement um, from anonymous constituent. Um, if we are moving forward with policing, we would need a police chief who re will reduce as much harm as possible. This means eliminate opportunities for violence, dehumanization, and breaking up families. We need a police chief who embraces the fact that if one of us isn't free, none of us are free. We would need a police chief who understands the harm of the prison industrial complex and how it has broken up black and brown families for centuries. We would need a police chief who is committed to eliminating racist, sexist, transphobic, homophobic, and ableist policies and practices by any means necessary. We would need a police chief whose goal is trauma-informed community accountability versus incarceration. We would need a police chief who believes in nonviolence and de-escalation as a legitimate training approach for police officers. We would need a police chief who understands the 700% increase in women in prisons, the majority of whom are black and brown. 
We would need a police chief who understands the intimate partner violence to prison pipeline and is committed to breaking it. We would need a police chief who is committed to ending oppressive policies such as failure to protect and who believes and legitimizes individuals who had no other choice but self-defense. We would need a police chief who wants to break down the power of the police department and the fraternal order of police. We would need a police chief who understands the need for community investment versus neighborhood neglect and militarization. Um, I want to thank the, the Nashvilleian who um, provided this comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. I don't believe we have another caller on the line yet. Is, are there still more um, statements that we can read? Um, there are, in fact, more statements. Um, give me a moment. Um, uh, Carrie uh, Newman from West End says, commitment to oversight by the COB, transparency with the COB, commitment to investigation and rectifying the allegations of sexual abuse and discrimination within the department. Um, Connor from Sylvan Park says, uh, they are looking for someone with the courage to hold the department accountable for their actions, have officers change from using force and custodial arrests to de-escalation in community building. They must address the rampant sexual assault and sexual harassment in the police department. They must be transparent and be willing to be held accountable by the people and work to serve with justice and equity under the law. Ideally, let's not have a chief of police, but rather have an elected oversight board run MNPD. Shall I read another? Yes, yes, no, thank you. I think we still don't have any callers on the line. Okay. Um, uh, William Briggs from East Nashville um, says he, he would, I would prefer someone that is either from Nashville or has been with the department for many years and understands how Nashville has changed. We need to continue cracking down on crime. This year alone, I have caught on camera 10 different individuals trying to break into my cars, drug deals in my alley, uh, and a drive-by shooting aimed at the Section 8 housing that is a, a constant rotation of drug dealers and not the needy working families that should be in there. I recently went downtown Nashville for the first time in months and I felt unsafe. Uh, Katie Garrett uh, from uh, Talbot's Corner I would like a chief of police who is focused on equity and who is more focused on preventative steps, such as investing in communities than punitive. I want someone who holds officers accountable by firing them or prosecuting them when they do not follow procedures and break the law. Josh Moran from... Um, Germantown says, stop stalking people for lighting a plant on fire. I'm not going to live in an overpriced city working for a corrupt company, profiting off of people's suffering, and still have the government tell me I can't light a plant on fire. When our parents retire, the only people left to keep our machine moving will be idiots and transplants who haven't realized their mistake yet. Publicly shame whoever is holding up the process and good headlines and make good headlines for ignoring the state government. I'm sure your friends on Broadway will appreciate the increased tourism. Nashville sure has a lot of budget issues to be neglecting a massive source of revenue. Thank you, Mel. I still mm -hmm. believe that we do not have any phone calls, so if there are more statements, we can read those. Yes, we have uh, several short statements. Um, 
Uh, Adriana White from Charlotte, Charlotte Park says that uh, she's that they are looking for empathy, vulnerability, accountability. And John Drake embodies all of these qualities and should be selected as police chief. Uh, Catherine Sargent from Belshire Estates um, says focus on training officers in de-escalation and implicit bias. Um, and a very concerned citizen in Antioch says, uh, I would like to see a person who is kind and compassionate. I would like to see a person that has experience outside of police work. I would like to see a person who is not currently a police officer. I'd like to see someone who understands our community, all of our community, not just a select few. I believe we need a person who is not trained to follow orders above choosing right and wrong. I believe we need a person who can lead and not a person who will do what is easy or simply what was done in the past. I'd like to see a person who is a human being and citizen first and police officer second. Um, and I believe with that, those are all of the written comments um, that we have. Uh, nope, I take it back. I do have another written comment. Um, Lucas Stein in North Nashville says, someone who is willing to stand by officers if they are right. Implement a press briefing style release of information like other departments do when critical incidents arise, such as Atlanta did when they had their controversial shooting in May or June, or LAPD when they have shootings or death in custody. Expand recruitment as much and as quick as possible, since obviously it will be harder and harder to bring qualified candidates in, <clears throat> and MNPD is already short. Expand the lateral classes so MNPD could bring in already trained and qualified candidates that may not want to go through another academy class for the same job they've been doing for years. Keep a single community engagement team. Hold on. Uh, bring back one flex team per precinct and expand JCTF or something like it. Implement 30 minute time slots where officers are encouraged and not forced um, to meet the community. So that could be doing knock and talks in a specific area for a few weeks in a row, always being posted at the library, community center, public park, or whatever to meet different people. Encourage officers not to be lazy in their proactivity. You don't have to keep stats to have officers go do things. It just pisses me off that we just are discouraged from making nearly any traffic, traffic stops, warrant service attempts, or Terry stops. Don't worry, dude, about three DV warrants. We won't come serve on you because supervisors don't want any proactivity. I guess people will just be free until they forget to run prior to police arrival on domestics. Have someone work with something out, have someone work something out with mobile crisis. They have their new facility. They should be able to take the 6,404 crazy people to hold on to until a bed opens in an inpatient place instead of wasting an officer a shift for three to five days for them sitting with the person at General or Centennial or Southern Hills. Just wanted to put those ideas on something that might be read. Um, I would much rather have someone with within MNPD be the next chief, but really it doesn't matter. You saw how Anderson for the most part was not liked by the officers and had a mixed relationship with the public. And Serpus, who was an outsider, who was despised by officers and led the department into the stat area that every everyone, officers and public should not be for. Um, don't 
Don't, I'm just going to read this directly as the constituent wrote it. Don't pick a bitch that will just pander to the people. People have not liked the police before, and this isn't something new. If you believe that bringing in an uber progressive police chief will get the police on your side, you will only need to wait 10 minutes after the announcement to read the news article saying that they were the wrong choice because X, Y, and Z. No chief will ever quell the dislike of police after a shooting justified or not you need someone who will stand up for what is right and not bend to the mob thank you lucas we appreciate your um, perspective thank you mel i believe we have a caller on the line all right callers on the line go ahead Is there anyone on the line? He should be on the line. Shane, Shane are you on the line? I think we might have lost them. Um, and I am hearing um, from uh, some folks uh, through email and text that there are constituents trying to call in um, and not connecting. Um, so if we could uh, pause for a moment um, and uh, hear from IT if there is um, some technical issue that we could fix. Are they trying to call the live call in line? Yes, that's what I'm hearing. Because we have not had that, that number ringing. So to to repeat the live call in number it is six two nine two five five one nine zero seven. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So for those listening who would like to call in, make sure that you were trying uh, dialing the number six two nine two five five one nine zero seven. And apparently T-Mobile users may not be able to call the number and that's a existing issue that ITS has been working on. Got it. So we, okay, yeah, I've, I've experienced that issue before. Um, we can wait. Um, a few minutes to see if anyone can get through. Is there another number that is possible or is this the only number that we can use? Uh, we have a caller that'll be ready in just a moment. Thank you. All right, we have a caller on the line. Go ahead. This is Shane Foster with the YWCA of Nashville and Middle Tennessee. And just wanted to make sure that any new chief that we bring into this particular position really needs to understand um, the issues pertaining to domestic violence victims um, in the city and in our community, as we know, especially right now uh, during a pandemic where we understand that 
domestic violence has spiked exponentially in our community. And we just want to make sure that, that, that the issues that are facing our community are, are front and center as it relates to this particular position. Thank you so much, Mr. Foster. I think we have another call in the house. Okay, thank you. We can hear you. You're on the line now. Hello, my name is Darkenia Waller. I'm the executive director of the Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee and the Cumberland. We were at 1321 Murfreesboro Pike, Nashville, Tennessee, 37217. Domestic violence and family violence has been an issue in our communities for a very long time, and overwhelmingly, the harm has been targeted at women. My friend Pat Shea, former executive director of the YWCA, used to say, if women could have cured domestic violence, we, have, we would have done it already. The reality is that it takes an ecosystem of individuals and organizations to truly impact domestic violence. As the sixth most dangerous city for women in America, we in Nashville owe it to our city to cultivate that ecosystem. At the Legal Aid Society, we offer free legal representation to victims in civil cases, including orders of protection, divorces, and the custody battles that go with them. YWCA, Morningstar, and Agape offer domestic violence shelters. The Family Safety Center offers wraparound services. The DA's office, the DA's office prosecutes and the courts convict and order rehabilitative services for perpetrators. The police force is an essential part of the ecosystem that must be well-trained, compassionate, and responsive for this ecosystem to truly work. So on behalf of the Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee and the Cumberland, we encourage the police chief to recognize his responsibility to the balance of this ecosystem and to dedicate the resources necessary to make Nashville the safest city for women. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waller. Um, I don't think that we have any calls on the line right now. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So again, the number to call in is 629 955 Do you have uh, make a statement? Um, I do have a, another written statement to share. Um, this is from Chris Jones in West Nashville. I would like to see a police chief who is not afraid to put the welfare of the community ahead of political agendas. I understand a chief serves at the pleasure of the mayor, but as someone who takes an oath to serve and protect the community, not the mayor, the chief must be willing to serve the community, not cater to the whims of the mayor's office. We also need a police chief who is not afraid to hold officers who violate their oath accountable and remove anyone who ignores or tolerates corrupt, corruption and cover-ups. Thank you, Chris, um, for, for your statement. Um, we have a, a concerned citizen um, from uh, South Nashville. I want a chief that has um, no allegiance to any politician, someone from outside the department who will be willing to remove those who participate or turn a blind eye to sexual assault, harassment, and discrimination. I want someone with integrity who does the job the way it should be done, not worried about holding on to power. Thank you um, from uh, South Nashville. Thank you, Mel. I believe we do not have any callers on the line right now. Um, is that right? We don't have anybody in the queue right now. Okay. We have a few minutes um, left in case anyone is listening that wants to call. That number is 629-255-1907.
Um, for um, the constituents um, who have tried to call in this evening um, and were not able to get through, um, it, particularly if you are um, a T-Mobile caller, um, I'm, I want to apologize um, that you were not able to get through, but I really do want to encourage you um, to uh, log in um, at mnconashville.com so you can provide a, a written uh, statement. Um, we would definitely uh, like to hear from you. Thank you, Mel. And I still think that we do not have any calls in the queue. Is that correct? That's correct. We can wait a, a couple of more minutes um, since we do have some time in case anyone wants to call. We are waiting. Um, if uh, you can tell folks when the next COB meeting is, um, uh, that would be appreciated. Sure. So the next COB meeting, uh, the next full COB meeting is on September 23rd uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. You can, it will be online um, since the governor has extended the executive order um, allowing us to conduct our meetings online. So look for a link um, via MNCO's um, social media or the MNCO website. All right, we have a caller on the line. All right, caller, you can go ahead. Hello, this is Dwayne from East Nashville in, in Antioch. Um, calling to make sure that the next uh, police chief embraces diversity uh, beyond race, but also includes the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community. Thank you so much for your comment. Do we have any other callers on the line now? No, we don't. Well, I think we can conclude if uh, we don't have any more calls. Um, we will have a few more of these sessions, and I think the call-in information will be the same. Am I correct uh, in saying that? No. Yes, that, that's that's right. It'll be the same phone number. Um, and we will be announcing the date for that um, very shortly, along with um, the communities of focus um, for, for that call in. Um, and in the meantime, um, if constituents can leave their statement at any time by calling 629-255-1906, and we will play your statement at uh, the next um, community town hall. Thank you, Mel, and thank you, Dr. Richmond, for joining us today, and also- We have one you. more call coming through. 
Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, just one moment. Hi, my name is Dawn Harper. I'm the CEO at the Nashville Children's Alliance. NCA provides child-friendly forensic interviews, family advocacy, and therapy for children who have been sexually abused, physically abused, and who have witnessed a violent crime. And we work closely with our multidisciplinary team partners, which includes law enforcement, the Department of Children's Services, and the District Attorney General's Office. Last year, we had a total of 896 children walk through our door to receive help for abuse. And we know nationally there are 700,000 children abused in the U.S. annually. And if you think about that number, it compares to the entire population of Washington, D.C. Nashville's children and families need a police chief that will lead MNPD toward excellence and collaborate with the Child Protective Investigative Team partners and make sure victims of child abuse and domestic violence are top priority. Thank you very much for your comment, Ms. Harper. I don't believe we have any other ones on the yet right now. No, we don't have any other calls on the line. So if you have any um, short closing, um, Chair Martinez and uh, Chair uh, Dr. Richmond, um, go ahead. I think, you know, two minutes at most. Uh, thank you. Um, well, first off, I would like to thank all of the, the callers, uh, those who submitted uh, both uh, live and recorded, and those uh, who submitted written statements. Uh, your comments were very informative and very educational uh, and will be very helpful and useful uh, as this process moves forward. Uh, as um, Chair Martinez reminds you, we still have uh, two more of these sessions scheduled. Um, and we encourage you to continue um, uh, to uh, encourage people to, to listen in and participate. Again, you can submit your comments uh, online uh, or uh, again, you can call 24-7 at 629-255-1906. In addition, the Metro Human Relations Commission we meet first Monday of each month, although next Monday, of course, is Labor Day. So our next meeting will be on Monday, September 14th. Um, and, um, and our meetings will also be held online, at least for the foreseeable future. And uh, we encourage people to, to log in uh, and to, to listen and, uh, and to learn more about the Metro Human Relations Commission. So uh, again, uh, certainly on behalf of members of the MHRC, uh, we appreciate uh, your participation today. And uh, to finish this out, uh, Chairman Martinez. Thank you, Dr. Richmond. Yes, uh, I just also want to extend my thanks to everyone that called in to give a statement. Uh, we're definitely encouraged by our community's participation tonight and uh, last week as well. So we look forward to uh, hearing from more of our community at the next session, which we will announce very soon. Uh, please continue to stay involved. You can join us uh, at the next COB meeting on September 23rd. Uh, thank you so much for participating tonight. conclude our uh, community safety town hall uh, Monday, August 31st. Thank you, everyone be safe. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. 
If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.